very much, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure for me to be here with you today because this is an important and historic event. This is a place where we're bringing together so many communicators who want to discuss and want to wor work towards greater openness and greater transparencies. So this is really, uh, for me, an honor to be here. It's a pleasure also because, as you said, I'm responsible for communication within the European Economic and Social Committee, but also because the EESC represents civil society in Europe. So civil society is often uh, a target of your own communication. We are 344 members coming from 27 member states representing employers' organizations, workers' organizations, NGOs of different interests, consumer interests, environment interests. We get together and we are uh, the only institution within the EU which actually has a direct link to civil society because all of us work back in our member states. So I'm from Malta, for example, and I live and reside in Malta and I work in, in Malta. So this is the direct link between the institutions via the ESC to civil society. And this is why we call ourselves a bridge between the EU, between Brussels and civil society. But our role goes beyond this because we are consulted, we have to be consulted on a number of legislation uh, by the Council, the European Council, by the European Parliament and by the European Commission. But our role is also then to engage and communicate with our stakeholders, the citizens and also civil society. And in this context, I'd like to share with you some uh, relevant data which actually emerged last week from the Eurobarometer survey which the European Parliament has conducted. And we see that now there is half of the Europeans, the ones that were surveyed, that say it is a good thing to be uh, part of the European Union. This is a first time majority where they're saying it is a good thing to be part of the European Union. What is said is that we still have an, a majority, an absolute majority, who feel that their voice does not matter within the EU. So we see that there is a rise amongst the people that do feel that they have a say in the European Union, but we still have an absolute majority who feel they do not have a voice, they do not have a say in the European Union. In terms of European identity, um, the main values or the main identities which they link to the European Union is democracy, freedom, and the euro, yes, the euro. So this is uh, three things which came out in the very forefront as being the important things in European identity. In terms of um, the issues which the citizens would like the European Union to tackle at a European level and not at a national level are the things related to poverty and social exclusion. So these are being given um, as, as the relevance for the European Union to tackle. In terms of what are the most important things uh, to be tackled at the national level, not surprisingly, the biggest concern for the citizens are actually growth and the fight for unemployment. These are quite encouraging results, I have to say, but what is then on, con on the contrast, uh, not encouraging, is the fact that you had one third of the respondents who couldn't even mention one single European institution. I mean, they were asked to mention three, they couldn't even mention one of them. And only a quarter of the respondents have actually mentioned the European Commission. So, this is, shows that there is a lot of more work to be done. Some good news, however, came because when they were asked when is the European Parliament holding it, its election, we see that um, a reasonable quarter of the ones surveyed could actually say the date. It's in 2014, actually. But could, from two years in advance, say that in June 2014 there will be the European Parliament elections. So what does this 
tell us, indicate to us as European uh, communicators, um, the ones who communicate policy. First and foremost, it reinforms even further the fact that we have to communicate in partnership. We have to be together in giving one single message or a number of messages, but a few of them and together. So this is the approach um, which needs to be done so that we can all have a common narrative when communicating with the citizen. And to this end, we, we really strive to uh, communicate in partnership. And the institutions do get together to identify what are the priorities for communication with the citizens. In fact, there is a, a unique uh, platform where you have Vice President and Commissioner uh, Reading, you have uh, the Vice President from Parliament, Mrs. Podimata, you have uh, the, the Presidency of the Council, you have myself and the Committee of the Region where we come together as five institutions and agree on the communication priorities, which for the next two years are the economic recovery, the year of the citizen, and the European Parliament election. But for us, what's important also is the going local. It is not targeting our communication which is with what we call the Brussels bubble, the people who are already the converted ones, but going local in the member states, in the communities, with the people, the men on the street, and really creating a dialogue. So going local is one of the things which uh, we believe brings a lot of value in really engaging the citizen. Beyond this, um, during my vice presidency, I have specifically decided to focus on a target or audience, which is young people, the upcoming young European and also to engage in using a number of specific communication tools. Web communication, social media, mobile internet, uh, because these are, this is an important channel for communication. It does not replace the other channels of communication. It complements very well, it is an important tool, and we as institutions, we as governments, need to use also this tool. But be warned, because the netizen is very skillful at communication. The netizen expects immediate, brief, concise communication. Above all, it's two-way communication. It's not just me telling you, it is engaging in what is a two-way communication. In this respect, uh, some of the projects which we've implemented are, are really uh, carried out in a way which is in the framework of the Open Government Partnership, which we see being implemented here in Montenegro. It stands for Open Governance, for direct and two-way communication between institutions and citizens, and genuine public participation in policy making, using modern communication technology and tools. All these values enshrined in the declaration which you will be signing tomorrow. So just to give you a few examples, one of our projects is Your Europe, Your Say, where we ask schools across Europe to be part of, of this project. And we get uh, close to 1,000 requests per year for schools to participate in Your Europe, Your Say. And what it's all about is that they have, for a day, um, create the mock process of influencing policy making. And the scope is really to show that their voice counts. There is a way in which they can influence policy making. Another project, something I am very, very happy about, is our video challenge. And this is uh, a tool, a project which we've used to ask young Europeans what they think about Europe using the tools they know how to use. So taking a film with their mobile phone, with a camera, with whatever, uploading it on YouTube, getting a wider 
um, population across Europe to vote for them, and then coming up with the 10 best videos. And actually, I have to say, I was particularly touched to see how young people look at Europe and how uh, they see what Europe is all about, what, means, what it means to them. And we use these videos quite extensively ourselves now um, as also to communicate about uh, Europe. One other project is Five Ideas for a Younger Europe. And this is where myself and the Vice President of the European Parliament go to a number of universities in different member states. And rather than being the politicians who talk, we are the ones who are, say to them, OK, give us your five ideas. What do you think European policy should be doing? What policies would you like to see for your present and your future? There again, amazing input comes from the young people of how they view Europe, what they would like to see uh, in, in Europe. There are a number of other activities, which I'll, I won't go into them, but next year most of them will be focusing on the year of citizen because this is one of our communication priority. So from my point of view, I'm really, really delighted to be here amongst you. I'm delighted because you will be signing this uh, very important declaration, because you are discussing openness, transparency, issues which are so important for today's citizen. Also, I'm delighted that it is here in Montenegro, because one can really applaud what is being done in Montenegro. The Open Government Partnership Initiative is truly praiseworthy in getting civil society involved in a dialogue with the authorities. And I'm pleased to note that there is a more inclusive approach in the Western Balkans. And Montenegro is truly an example for this. So I, I am particularly happy that it's being taken place here. I was also very glad to learn that um, uh, civil society is involved in the negotiation team with the European Union. So this is a first, actually, where you have civil society at this important stage at this table. From our point of view, the ESC is committed that through the means at its disposal, it will continue helping civil society in Montenegro through um, a joint consultative committee which we have where our members sit with members of civil society from Montenegro. We will be helping so that we ensure that there will be more consultation in civil society, increased transparency of, and also increased access to funds available for civil society projects. And now it's timely, I just would like to tell you that the first meeting of this committee would actually be held on the 2nd of October in Brussels, where we'll be having, uh, amongst a number of guests, your chief negotiator for uh, entry into the European Union. So, a big congratulations from my end. You can vouch on the support of the European Economic and Social Committee. Also, I augur you big success for these two days, and I hope there are many, many more to come after these two days. Thank you very much. Thank you.